this is MSJ Chem. In this video, I'll be looking at the bonding triangle. So we'll start by looking at a simplified bonding triangle. This bonding triangle has a type of bonding at each vertex. The types of bonding are metallic, ionic, and covalent. On the y axis, we have difference in electronegativity, and on the x axis, we have average electronegativity. For ionic bonding, we have a moderate to high electronegativity difference and a moderate value for the average electronegativity. For covalent bonding, we have a low difference in electronegativity and a moderate to high value for the average electronegativity. And for metallic bonding, we have a low difference in electronegativity and a low average electronegativity value. These two factors determine the type of bonding that occurs in a substance and also the properties of the substance. We'll also see that bonding is often described as a continuum, which means, for example, we can have ionic bonds with some covalent character, as well as covalent bonds with ionic character. So here we have a more detailed bonding triangle. Just like the previous example, this triangle has metallic, ionic, and covalent bonding. But as we can see, it also has this section, which is labeled as polar covalent. On the right side, we also have percent covalent and percent ionic. As mentioned previously, the position on the bonding triangle not only determines the type of bonding, but also the properties of the substance. So next we'll have a quick review of the different properties of the bonding types. So in this table, we'll look at the type of bonding together with their properties. The properties are state at room temperature, boiling and melting points, electrical conductivity, and solubility in water. Covalent compounds are mainly gases and liquids, and generally they have low boiling and melting points. They also have low electrical conductivity and low solubility in water. Compounds with ionic bonding are usually solids at room temperature, and generally have high boiling and melting points. The electrical conductivity depends on the state, which is low when solid and high when molten, or an aqueous solution, and most ionic compounds are soluble in water. And finally, we have metallic bonding. Almost all metals are solid at room temperature, and they generally have high boiling and melting points. They also have high electrical conductivity, and are insoluble in water. So next we'll use the bonding triangle to determine the type of bonding in a substance. The first example we look at is the bonding in chlorine. We'll start by calculating the difference in electronegativity. Because chlorine is composed of two of the same atom bonded together, the difference in electronegativity is zero. Next, we calculate the average electronegativity, which is 3.2. So using the bonding triangle, we can determine the type of bonding. So that's zero on the y-axis and 3.2 on the x-axis, which puts us firmly in the covalent bonding region. The percentage covalent character is 100% and the percentage ionic character is 0%. So this would be classified as a non-polar covalent bond. The next example we look at is hydrogen chloride. The difference in electronegativity between hydrogen and chlorine is 1.0 and the average electronegativity is 2.7. So we have 1.0 on the y-axis and 2.7 on the x-axis. This puts us in the polar covalent region of the triangle. So the bond between hydrogen and chlorine is a polar covalent bond. The bond has 75% covalent character and 25% ionic character. The next example we look at is cesium fluoride. The difference in electronegativity between cesium and fluorine is 3.2. And the average electronegativity is 2.4. So that's 3.2 on the y-axis and 2.4 on the x-axis, which puts us firmly in the ionic region of the bonding triangle. So the bonding in cesium fluoride is ionic, with a low percentage covalent character and a high percentage ionic character. The last example we look at is magnesium. The difference in electronegativity is zero, and the average electronegativity is 1.3. So that's zero on the y-axis and 1.3 on the x-axis, which puts us in the metallic region of the bonding triangle. So the type of bonding in magnesium is metallic bonding. So let's end the video with a summary. Chlorine had a zero difference in electronegativity and an average electronegativity of 3.2.
This tells us that the bonding between the atoms in chlorine is non-polar covalent. Hydrogen chloride had a difference in electronegativity of 1.0 and an average electronegativity of 2.7 and the bonding between the atoms was polar covalent. Cesium fluoride had a difference in electronegativity of 3.2 and an average electronegativity of 2.4 and the bonding in cesium fluoride was ionic. And finally we have magnesium with a difference in electronegativity of 0 and an average electronegativity of 1.3 and the type of bonding is metallic.